A new survey finds that one in three admit stealing a coworker's food from the office refrigerator. The other two thirds are damn liars, Kilmeade. <laughs> According to a new study, get that picture off. Greg Gutfeld, the acerbic wit of Fox News, is known for his razor sharp barbs and unapologetic humor. And then there's Brian Kilmeade, the affable everyman, often on the receiving end of Gutfeld's most pointed jabs. For years, viewers have watched as these two Fox News personalities engage in what appears to be an ongoing feud, with Gutfeld seemingly taking particular delight in mocking his colleague. But is there more to this dynamic than meets the eye? The origins of the dynamic. What is wrong with you? Why are you obsessed with me? You should be, I say this, you should be worried when people aren't obsessed with you, oh. right? It's like, I don't, there, are, there are people at this company I will not make jokes about because they can't handle it. They can't handle it. Right. But you, like, I, I love doing it to you because I could be as, I could be as obnoxious as I, as I can possibly muster and you still smile. It doesn't bother. <laughs> it doesn't. The roots of Greg Gutfeld and Brian Kilmeade's unique on-air relationship can be traced back to their early days working together at Fox News. As co-hosts on various programs over the years, the two developed a rapport characterized by witty exchanges and mock insults. Gutfeld, known for his biting sarcasm, found an ideal foil in the affable Kilmeade. Their contrasting personalities, Gutfeld the acerbic cynic and Kilmeade the cheerful everyman, created a natural comedic tension. Initially, the back and forth was clearly all in good fun. But as Gutfeld's barbs towards Kilmeade grew sharper and more frequent, some began to wonder if there was genuine animosity between the surface. Gutfeld seemed to take particular delight in poking fun at Kilmeade's intelligence, often implying his co-host was dim-witted or clueless. For his part, Kilmeade usually played along, feigning offense or hurt feelings to heighten the comedy. Over time, the dynamic became a defining feature of their on-air interactions. Viewers came to expect and even look forward to Gutfeld's cutting remarks about Kilmeade. But the sheer volume and intensity of Gutfeld's mockery led some to speculate there must be real tension between the two. Evolution of on-air personas Anheuser-Busch has shed over $5 billion in value since partnering with Dylan Mulvaney, making, the, making it the least successful, successful duo since Alec Baldwin teamed up with Smith, Smith and Wesson. <laughs> Terrible! I couldn't even spit it out, it's so bad. As both Gutfeld and Kilmeade's careers at Fox News progressed, their on-air personas became more defined. Gutfeld cultivated his image as the network's resident satirist, unafraid to take aim at anyone and everyone. Kilmeade, meanwhile, leaned into his role as the everyman, often playing the straight man to Gutfeld's comedian. This evolution allowed their dynamic to flourish. Gutfeld's increasingly outrageous insults were met with Kilmeade's exasperated sighs or bemused chuckles, creating a comedic rhythm that viewers found irresistible. The more Gutfeld pushed, the more Kilmeade seemed to take it in stride, further fueling speculation about the true nature of the relationship. It's worth noting that this dynamic isn't confined to a single show. Whether appearing together on The Five, Fox and Friends, or Gutfeld's Late Night Show, the pair consistently fall into their familiar roles. Gutfeld's Jabs at Kilmeade Why is Gutfeld number one in Late Night? And I know the secret. It's all the wisecracks that Greg makes at my expense. Our beloved Greg carves out special time each day to think of fun, <laughs> clever, new ways to make fun of me, according to reports. To understand why some people perceive genuine animosity between Gutfeld and Kilmeade, it's worth examining the nature of Gutfeld's insults. His jabs at Kilmeade tend to be more pointed and personal than his mockery of other colleagues. Gutfeld frequently implies or outright states that Kilmeade is not very bright, referring to him as Simple Brian or expressing mock surprise when Kilmeade says something intelligent. Another favorite target is Kilmeade's perceived lack of importance or influence with Gutfeld often acting as though Kilmeade is forgettable or insignificant. While less common, Gutfeld occasionally pokes fun at Kilmeade's appearance, particularly his hair. He also regularly suggests that Kilmeade is bad at his job or ill-informed about the topics he covers. The relentless nature of these insults, often delivered rapid fire and with apparent glee, can come across as mean-spirited to some viewers. But it is crucial to note that Kilmeade almost always responds with good humor. 
Gutfeld's comedic style. Mm, so wait, you're telling me that the Democrats were lying? That's as surprising as Chris Christie ordering two desserts. <laughs> Gutfeld's approach to humor, particularly in his interactions with Kilmeade, is worth examining in more detail. His style can be characterized as a blend of roast comedy and deadpan delivery. He often delivers his most biting insults with a straight face, leaving viewers to wonder if he's joking or serious. This ambiguity is likely intentional. By keeping the audience guessing about the true nature of his feelings towards Kilmeade, Gutfeld maintains an element of tension that keeps viewers engaged. It's a tightrope walk between comedy and cruelty that Gutfeld seems to relish. Moreover, Gutfeld's insults often contain layers of irony and self-awareness. When he mocks Kilmeade's intelligence or relevance, he's also playing with the audience's perception of himself as an arrogant know-it-all. Kilmeade's role. It's good. It's almost therapeutic to go there. I think it's funny the fact that all he can do is insult me and giggle. So... <laughs> So, you know, he's a, he's a weird guy who has no friends. And, and the only way for him to get friends is to get a show. So, and then suddenly he has a panel. While much of the focus is on Gutfeld's behavior, it's important to consider Kilmeade's role in this dynamic. Far from being a passive target, Kilmeade is an active participant in their comedic exchanges. His reactions to Gutfeld's insults are carefully calibrated to maximize humor and maintain the illusion of conflict. Kilmeade's responses typically range from feigned hurt, playing up his nice guy image for laughs, to playful retaliation with his own milder insults. Often, he'll simply sigh or roll his eyes, as if resigned to Gutfeld's behavior. Sometimes, Kilmeade leans into the insults, agreeing with or amplifying Gutfeld's criticisms of him. Behind the scenes. Hello, everyone. I'm your great Gutfeld fill in Brian Kilmeade. He's your morning maverick, Steve Ducey. She's so hot, her blood type is Tabasco. It's Gretchen <laughs> Carlson. And he's your bite sized babbler, Greg Gutfeld. It's 8 to 8.45 in New York City, 3 a.m. in Bill Hemmer's basement. And this segment's packed tighter than Lima's eyelids. I don't know what that means. So let's do this, America. <laughs> Fantastic, Brian. I just did a great Gutfeld impersonation. Despite appearances, multiple sources close to both men insist that Gutfeld and Kilmeade are actually good friends off camera. In fact, their on-air feud is described as a mutually enjoyed bit that both men actively cultivate. In a 2019 appearance on Gutfeld's Fox Nation show, Kilmeade addressed the misconception directly. He revealed that fans often ask him about the supposed animosity, saying, quote, When I go on my sold-out tours, People assume that you and I absolutely have a problem with each other. Gutfeld confirmed this, adding, It's great, especially when you were on the five and I start insulting you. And people are like, what did Brian do to him? And if anybody asks, I go, it's too long to get into on Twitter. This suggests that both men are not only aware of how their dynamic is perceived, but actively play into it for comedic effect. They seem to relish the confusion it causes among viewers, treating it as an inside joke shared between them and their audience. Psychological appeal. So, uh, Mr. Kilmeade, what are your thoughts on this show? Well, I'm not going to stoop to giving numbers. Uh, I, am not, I don't have a figure skating background. I've not been into gymnastics, international competitions, but I'll say this. There's a little bit too much you. I thought it would be more about the panel. I wish there wasn't such emphasis on you. And my problem was I had such high hopes for the show. I think you know, I went up to you last week and I said, Greg, you're going to do great. And then I watched it. The enduring popularity of Gutfeld and Kilmeade's on-air relationship can be attributed to several psychological factors. The constant buildup of tension through Gutfeld's insults, followed by the release of Kilmeade's good-natured responses, creates a satisfying emotional cycle for viewers. Regular viewers develop a sense of familiarity with both men, feeling as though they're privy to an ongoing inside joke. Some viewers may take pleasure in seeing Kilmeade, quote, taken down a peg, especially if they perceive him as representing a certain archetype. The Benefits of Manufactured Conflict The Gutfeld-Kilmeade feud serves several purposes for both men and for Fox News as a whole. The back and forth adds an element of unpredictability and humor to otherwise serious news discussions. Clips of their more outrageous exchanges often circulate on social media, drawing attention to their shows. For Gutfeld, his mockery of Kilmeade reinforces his image as a sharp-tongued provocateur. For Gilmeade, playing the good-natured target 
enhances his everyman appeal. Viewers tune in partly to see what Gutfeld will say next about Kilmeade driving engagement. Career Impact and Network Dynamics. And the numbers are in. For the month of August, Gutfeld, the show, ranked as the most watched late night program on all television. This is the first time that a cable show has beaten the broadcast shows. The ongoing feud has significantly impacted their careers at Fox News. Gutfeld's boundary-pushing mockery of Kilmeade has solidified his position as one of the network's most distinctive voices, showcasing his quick wit and irreverent style. The approach has made him increasingly popular with viewers. Kilmeade, on the other hand, has seen his profile rise due to his ability to weather Gutfeld's constant barbs with grace and humor. By playing along and occasionally retaliating, Kilmeade has demonstrated versatility beyond his role as a straight news anchor. Both have leveraged this dynamic into additional opportunities like book deals and speaking engagements, becoming valuable assets to Fox News and ensuring their continued prominence on the network. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think about Gutfeld and Kilmeade's on-air relationship? Do you think there's any real animosity there, or is it just for show? Let us know in the comments section below.